Hello and welcome to my short video. In this clip I aim to show you how to uh, design and implement a simple exclusive OR gate using Verilog um, uh, in Xilinx ISC version 12.1. This video is closely based on that of Anthony Birch's video, um, but uh, with some of the modifications uh, and extra steps required uh, for the 12.1 uh, version uh, of the Xilinx ISE, uh, mainly including the plan ahead stage, um, uh, which is different to the user constraints file editing of previous versions, um, as well as some other bits and pieces regarding the PROM generation uh, that have changed somewhat um, since since Anthony Birch's video. Currently, okay, so this machine is running Ubuntu 64-bit. Um, it's running uh, version 11.04. And uh, if you're interested in getting uh, the Xilinx IRC suite and the uh, JTAG um, cable drivers running, um, visit my website www.george-smart.co.uk uh, where there's quite a lot of resources uh, regarding um, running the IRC under Linux. Okay, so let's get going. Programming IRC. As I say, using 12.1 uh, version M53 Delta. Just give it a second to load up. Okay, resize it for this window. Okay, so this is the uh, the main screen. Um, start off with uh, file new project. I do quite a lot of my uh, FPGA development in a subfolder, so I'll just add that to the path, and um, and then we'll create a folder called test for our project. We note here that we're going to be using a HDL hardware description language as opposed to a schematic or some of the other forms of um, uh, source entry so HDL and then go on. This uh, page of the wizard asks us to confirm the target design um, so we need to select here which FPGA we're using and some of the details. So I'm using um, a Spartan 3 e board from Digilent um, and that chip uses the um, Xilinx uh, uh, 3S500E and the package Fox Golf 320 and the speed of minus 4. I'm going to be using the XST uh, synthesis tool uh, for Verilog and VHDL. Um, we're not using a simulator so it doesn't particularly matter at the moment and uh, we're going to be writing in Verilog so uh, make sure that's selected. Most of the other options can be left um, as they are at the moment. OK, pressing next gives us uh, a summary of, um, of what we've just entered in the previous two dialog boxes. Um, and finish creates the project for us. OK, so we've now got the new project. Uh, it's different to previous versions. Um, to have reached this point before, you'd have had to uh, insist that you didn't want to add um, any source files. But, um, this version dumps you straight into a new project and you're free to add source files uh, as we're about to do now. So project new source we wish to add a uh, Verilog module and uh, we'll call that a test to keep him with uh, previous uh, names. Um, sorry it's important to note that you've uh, added to project as well here. <coughs> in keeping with uh, Anthony Birch's tutorial we use names in zero in one and out zero, uh, making sure, of course, to select the uh, direction output uh, for the output. Pressing next gives you a summary of what you've just entered. It tells us um, the pin definitions, or sorry, the port definitions, I should say, for the um, uh, Verilog module test.v we've just created, and finish uh, creates that for us. Okay, so this is the uh, the source code test.v um, and it's also given us um, a design summary as well uh, which we can close at the moment we don't need that uh, cluttering up our workspace okay so we want to uh, create the, uh, the simple uh, exclusive or function so assign out to zero equals in zero exclusively or and here we use the Karat symbol or Shift 6 on most English keyboards um, with IN 1 and then a semicolon at the end um, finishes that off. Okay, now we're free to save the design. That's uh, 
it's as much uh, VHDL as we're gonna sorry as Verilog as we're gonna write at the moment. Um, next point is to um, link these in uh, one in, in zero in one and out zero to pins on the uh, on the FPGA. So before in earlier versions there was an option under user constraints to create um, pin assignments. Um, we've got to now do um, I/O planning via the plan ahead tool, and we're going to go for the pre-synthesis uh, option. Okay, so we're warned here that we don't have a UCF file, user constraints file. Um, obviously, we need to add one of these. So yes, and then we wait for plan ahead to load up. Should take a second on here. There we go. <coughs> That will load. Okay. And that goes ahead and looks in all of our files and seeing what we need, what netlists we've got, and that kind of thing. Okay. We close the uh, close the welcome screen now. So this is the uh, footprint of our chip, the actual um, BGA ball gate array, and this is the uh, the silicon four floor print as it's referred to, or packaging device as they're seen here. OK, so we look at uh, test our project. We look at nets, which tells us the, uh, the nets that we need to have. Is it in 0, in 1, and out 0. Let's get ourselves some more room here. OK. So the next bit we need to look at is the I.O. ports here. So you can see here the scalar ports we have is uh, in 0, in 1, and out zero. So we need to map these to real, uh, real pins on the chip. So we're going to map these to some of the pins on here. Um, starting with uh, in zero, we're going to map that with uh, pin L13 on the chip. I'll apply that for a second. Uh, in one, will be mapped to pin L14 on the chip. I'm going to apply in that. Um, and the output uh, out zero be mapped to F12. Okay, apply that. These switches um, need pull-up resistors on them, so we select that from the configuration options here. And select pull-up and then apply. Again from here, pull-up and apply. And the LED uh, out zero doesn't have a pull up obviously as it's an output but I wish to reduce the drive current down very slightly to 8 milliamps now. Okay, and you can see that these are reflected here in the pull up and the drive strength values. Okay, so we save that now, that's done. And we close. It's okay to go ahead and close plan ahead. For the sake of curiosity, it's okay to look into this file, and you should see these things reflected in the UCF that you're uh, maybe used to dealing with. So here you can see the net and the, the mappings, and then the net again, and the drive and pull up um, options we specified earlier on. Flick back to the source code a moment. Okay, right. Once we've done that, we're uh, we're good to start. Um, good to start generating. And synthesizing, so um, we want to implement the design, run all, uh, tell it to run the synthesis as well as uh, as well as the implementation. Um, so we'll just give it a moment to wait for that. <coughs> Doesn't take too long, I hope. background noise some of the vehicles in that game past the workshop. Okay, noise always happens on this machine for some reason. The uh, generate uh, post place and routing uh, the program um, segmentation faults on the machine. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the, the task's done and it's just the program crashes on exit for some obscure reason. Um, but uh, as you can see, everything's been completed successfully, so I haven't got around to figuring that one out yet. Okay, 
The next part of the step we want to do is generate the programming file. This will give us the uh, .bit file that um, the FPGA requires. Before we do that, we're just going to have a quick look at the process properties under the startup options to check that the uh, FPGA starts up with the C clock um, as opposed to the user clock or JTAG bus clock. So uh, C clock, okay.